Hi, I'm Sari Sudekran. In this video, I'll break down the lighting of the candy color clown scene from Blue Velvet. This video is about lighting theory and some practical suggestions based on my experiences and opinions. It does not contain information on actual fixtures or behind the scenes. If this is not your thing, please stop watching. The entirety of Blue Velvet is beautiful to watch, mostly for the colors and textures chosen by director David Lynch. It's just an amazing world that has inspired thousands of cinematographers since. The scene we are looking at happens at night. We are already well into the film and it's positively a bad time for our hero Jeffrey, stuck in the back of the car with a bunch of goons. But that's not the scary part. The scary part is Frank and Dorothy. Jeffrey is going to learn a thing or two about himself. In many ways he shares Frank's tastes, and this is stated outright during the scene. It's possibly one of the reasons Frank doesn't kill Jeffrey at the end of it all, but he does make sure Jeffrey understands his own inner self. The scene is in two parts, inside the car and then outside, near a closed factory. If you're wondering why the frame looks so good, it's because this was shot in anamorphic. The anamorphic format is made for cars. Just look at the car compositions by Tarantino. This moving car scene was shot by what is called the poor man's process. They're not on the road, but in a studio. Lights move to give us the impression it is night. The scene starts with a bunch of close-ups so the tone is set. The speed at which they're going has been established. The light is front on and there's a second source for the back as well. It's broken up by the frame of the car. Look at Dorothy's shot here. There's definitely something other than the frame, possibly the rear view mirror. Or at least that's what it's supposed to be. A couple of grip hands move the car, the actors act and the camera shakes a bit if necessary. And all this time you're thinking they're actually moving. That is the poor man's process because it's a lot cheaper to do than actually film on a road at night. Another great film to learn the poor man's process is The Godfather. You'd be amazed by how much you can achieve with so little. Coming back to Blue Velvet, Frank decides to stop the car and they're outside a factory. There are two or three main lights here, one for the factory itself, one for the car and one more from the same direction closer to the camera. It's a softer source but you can see it is flagged off from the car but lights the foreground. Then there are smaller fixtures inside the factory so we know where we are. Back inside the car, Frank turns around and someone opens a door and the car lights come on. It's right above and not very soft. The HMI light at the back backlights the actors and the car. Also observe the windshield. It's dirty on the left and clean on the right. So it's probably not an accident. It was created to hide the background and also look good at the same time, since it sort of echoes the shape of the steering wheel. In reality, Frank wouldn't have been able to see a thing due to flare from that, but creatively, the shot looks amazing. The reverse shot has a strong light as well. It's hard, and when they step out of the car, there's a strong light in the back, probably too bright, but who cares? The scene is just so powerful, you don't really see it. Here's the most interesting part lighting-wise. Somebody holds up a flashlight and underlights Frank. Why? Who knows? It just looks weird and it looks cool. And it gives him cash light so he can look even more menacing than he really is. You can see in addition to the side lighting, there's also frontal light, which is sort of like a fill light and it's for exposure. Film didn't and doesn't have the same latitude in the shadows, so you have to use fill lights or just go black. With modern digital cameras, you probably won't need to fill. On the contrary, you might see too much. The reverse shot is side lit but softer. Frank is hard, Jeffrey is soft. One of the things to note here is the lights are flagged, so they don't spread all over the place. This creates separation between the foreground and the background. Flagging is just as important as lighting. Then we come to the close-up of Frank, which is also interesting because someone had the unenviable task of pointing that flashlight during his best take. You can't screw it up. One of the best places to look at the number and shape of fixtures is in the eyes. In his eyes, you can see two fixtures on the right. One from the flashlight and the other is the fill. The lighting in this scene is literal and probably too honest. It's a cruel world according to David Lynch. And of course it wouldn't be a David Lynch film without beautiful music and great sound design. That's it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For cinematographer Frederick Elms, please hit like. For director David Lynch, please subscribe. And for that scene with the ear, hit the bell after subscribing. You won't hear the bell, but look on the bright side. You won't miss any new videos.